In a high-stakes game of cat and mouse, the tables turn when a cunning suspect, Amelia Bassoon, uses her charm to sway the detectives. But what happens when the line between manipulation and truth becomes blurred? Join us as we delve into the intriguing case of Amelia Bassoon, where seduction takes center stage in the pursuit of justice. Can the detectives resist her allure and uncover the chilling secrets hidden beneath her facade? Get ready for a gripping tale of deception, betrayal, and the ultimate quest for the truth. Are you ready to witness the mind games unfold? Let's dive in. Yeah, how long have you guys been married? He didn't tell me what he was going to do because I don't know what's severing me. I'm just on? scared. This is Amelia Bassoon attempting to seduce the detectives to get away with murder. Amelia was arrested in connection with the murders of Cindy and Sean Stack. They think she helped her husband to cover up the crime, but she will do everything she can to get away with it, including flirting with the detectives. But while this case started in a playful manner, it quickly evolved into one of the most intense interrogations of all time. They're dead. They're both dead. I didn't do anything. The detective starts by reading Amelia her rights and getting some basic information. Am I, like, getting arrested or something? I just normally, when this starts, is like someone getting in trouble or arrested or something. Well, we just, like I said, we want to be able to talk to you. Already, it's obvious that Amelia is making her voice high-pitched and speaking in a timid tone of voice. While this could just be what she sounds like normally, other footage of her suggests otherwise. I, I don't want to press charges, but I, I would like a no contact order. I can do that. Okay. Her change in tone could also be a reaction to being in a stressful and uncomfortable situation. And as the interrogation continues, she begins to show more and more of these flirtatious signs. What up with Josh? Did you say that? He, did I hear you say he shot himself in the leg? Yeah, so in December, he um we went bowling. Okay. The bullet went around the bone and around the artery, wow. through and through. Jeez, that's lucky. I know, he's crazy. <laughs> How long have you guys been married? Um, it'll be a year in September. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Here, Amelia gathers her hair and moves it all to the right-hand side, exposing her neck on the left. The neck carries the jugular, an important and vulnerable part of the body that many people will make an effort to protect. However, when someone feels comfortable or safe around someone, they're likely to expose their neck by tilting their head or moving their hair to the side, suggesting attraction or at least the desire to show it. All right, so maybe I can tell you the reason why we're here today mm -hmm. is because of that issue with the bank. Okay. Okay, all right. Does that surprise you? Um, for this kind of situation, yeah. Okay. Like this intense. I mean, I got in trouble at work, which makes sense, but I'm just confused about this. Well, let's let's walk through it a little bit, okay? Um, let's okay. walk through that and see how maybe we came here today, all right, mm -hmm. and find out if this was just a misunderstanding or, or what, mm -hmm. okay? The story ended with Cindy and Sean dead, but started with an equally disgusting crime. Amelia was an employee at Chase Bank and exploited her position to steal $50,000 from a dementia-ridden man. She wrote two checks from his account, and her husband Josh deposited them in his accounts. When Cindy and Sean started asking questions, Josh purchased a gun and shot the pair in their own apartment. This interrogation is not only to uncover the details behind the theft, but also to determine what part she played in the killings. So how did you, what happened with this write-up? So, I mean, had you been a banker for him for a while? I mean... Yeah, so I've been his banker since I moved here. Did you? Okay. Since we moved here. So um, so what happened with these checks? Um, nothing. We just should to call them, have the record over our global security. Mm -hmm. So when they came in, they pulled like call logs, they pulled like cameras, just to make sure like little signature files. Because I mean, it's still federal, it's the bank. So mm -hmm. they wanted to make sure that I wasn't like, I guess, stealing. Mm -hmm. When you talk to Gerald, I mean, how, how did he appear to you? Is he a young guy, old guy? He's old. Oh, well, how did he appear to you when you talked to him? Okay. He was okay. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any issues when you when you talked to him about remembering things or anything like that? No, he told me he had brain. Like I know, like a little about himself. Like mm -hmm. he had brain surgery. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the most part, he remembers things. I don't think he forgets really. He just, but other than that, he's yeah. okay. Yeah, nice guy. Amelia does her best to seem open and honest here, but as soon as she finishes up talking, she brings her shoulders up, hunches over slightly, and crosses her arms. All movements that are done to protect vital parts of the body and are obvious tells that someone feels uncomfortable. The lines only become more apparent as the interview continues. What did he have you do? Like, how did he, what did he ask for? No, I think it's just he put the two checks and $25,000 each. Mm -hmm. And that was it. The grandson came and picked him up. And... The grandson came and picked him up? Mm -hmm. 
Cookies. It was either the day before or the day after. I opened up an account for him. I don't know if it was the same day or not. But I did open up his account for the grandson. Oh, so he must have just deposited those checks into the account? I think your best bet right now is to be completely honest with us, okay? okay. So let me, let me, let's go on a little bit more, okay? The truth is going to be the best thing right now. This happened in May. Is the account still open? The grandfather? Mm -hmm. No. Amelia's speech has become much shorter and unclear, and she continues to seem more and more uncomfortable when pressured about Gerald's banking accounts. Of course, the detective has noticed this and is seeing straight through her original timid and playful demeanor, so he decides to ramp up the pressure. Okay, at a certain point in time, we have to move past him, all right? Mm -hmm. He's a nice guy, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you really do care about him. I do. Do you see now? Mm -hmm. But it's not like I, I don't want uh, to uh, Okay. Mm -mm, no. I don't want to say I took advantage of him because he's a really nice guy. Yeah. And uh, Josh, mm -hmm. did he ever talk to them? No, he never spoke to them. He doesn't even know who they are. Well, you've been at their house. We have access to his account. Yeah, but I haven't. You opened it. Yeah, but I don't remember his address. That was a long time. It was a couple months ago. And you talked to Cindy? Mm -hmm. Possible she gave you their address? Um, I remember. Is it going to be in the text messages? No. But you don't remember if she gave you the address or not? She never did. She had no reason to. Possible Josh went over there and you didn't know? I mean, how would he know where they lived, though? Um, that's not the question I was asking. Is it possible that he went over there? Not that I know, you know. So you, don't, you can't say for sure he did or didn't? I can say no. How can so you I know? say no? Because he doesn't know where they... He doesn't know them. Amelia now decides to change strategies. Instead of her original flirtatious and playful demeanor, she switches to an innocent and clueless one. At points, she even smiles and laughs while being asked serious questions, attempting to downplay the intensity and pressure. This is a sign that the facade she's put up is starting to break, and the detectives take this as an opportunity to press her even. I think you need to start understanding the severity of the situation, because right? uh, I don't know if you really do, all right? And I think you need to start understanding that how this interview goes and where, what, you know, what decisions you make here are going to affect your life for a long, long, long time, okay? I think you think that you had this all planned out, and I think you, and again, not saying it in a bad way, but this is what we do, okay? When we make mistakes, we figure things out and we go, okay, there's a lot more going on here, all right? And you know whose name is all over this right now? You and Joshua, okay? So if there's things that are going on and it's not you or Joshua, you need to start thinking real hard and real fast, okay? Who, who is involved in this and what happened, okay? Okay. That's all I know. Okay. Things got out of hand, okay? This got out of hand. I think what happened was Cindy was asking you for this money back and you didn't have it. And there's there's some issues there, okay? And things get out of hand. Sometimes, again, when we make a mistake, we do something wrong and things the ball gets rolling and we can't stop it. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Okay? Listen, you have your whole life out of you. I know. You have a seven-year-old son. That's why I want to Well, no. I, this, hey, this is... The, this, no, listen to me for a second. This is reality now, okay? okay. All right? Yeah. You have a seven-year-old son. You have an obligation to him, mm -hmm. okay? So whatever happened beyond this, we need to know. Because right now, we need to know. Because if, if you want to keep going with what you're telling us, okay, mm -hmm. then we're going to have to go on that, all right? And you have to understand. Yeah. So somebody did something, we need to know now. Now, talking about her son obviously strikes a chord with Amelia. And as interrogations are all about exploiting emotions to extract truth, the detective jumps on this to make her as vulnerable as possible. No. Well, this is the stuff we need to know. Listen, if he put you up to it, he put you up to it. That's okay. We need to know these things, though. Again, like Detective Marashi said, I think you're kind of at this crossroads right now, okay? You've got Josh, who you probably love, and he's your husband, okay? But you also have Julian. And you got a picture of that little boy, you got a picture of not being able to watch him grow up. Think about that for a second. Think about being put somewhere very far away from him, and the only way you're going to have contact with him is through letters. You're going to get pictures in jail, in prison, of your little boy growing up. That's your future. What? Yeah, they're dead. So now we really need to talk. At this point, all the games that Amelia was playing have gone out the window. Whether she's innocent or not, she's now being accused of aiding a murderer and is faced with losing her job, house, and a seven-year-old son. So understandably, she's starting to get incredibly scared. I do not want to go to jail. I don't. I don't. Like, if I get fired, okay, let me get fired at work, but I don't want to go to jail. I didn't do anything. From here, the detectives try to capitalize on this, using her vulnerable state to try and extract as much information as possible from her. But Amelia asserts that she's only told the truth throughout the entire interrogation. She didn't know Cindy and Sean were dead, and she had nothing to do with their murders. But here is where the interrogation takes a massive turn. These detectives have now been talking to her for over two hours, and they've executed this style of interrogation almost perfectly. But for the last few hours, they've just been going around in circles to no avail. So instead, 
They leave the room to discuss a new approach. And that's when Detective Number 3 enters with blankets and a kind, apologetic tone. Hey, I'm going to talk. I'm going to get up on Facebook now. Did I tell you who they were? You, they were going to be your witness. I'm going to ask that's big. So, the only way it's going to happen is you got to talk to them. That's why I want to talk to them, because I, I just don't want to be involved in any of this. Like, okay. I don't want any part of this. I want to be able to go home. Entering like this after such a stressful experience with the other detectives will set Amelia's mind at ease and subconsciously enforce the idea that he isn't a threat. At the start of the interrogation, Amelia was trying to seduce the detectives in an attempt to get better treatment and hopefully even a lighter sentence. So if the third detective plays into this by treating her kindly and playing her game, maybe he'll have a chance of finding out what really happened. In these cases, you can't lie. You can't, which, which means holding something back, mm -hmm. telling a partial truth, mm -hmm. or just flat out lying. Mm -hmm. That is accessory. You're protecting someone. And I'm telling you right now, we don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. If you know what happened. Mm -hmm. No, he just told me if you say anything, then. Yeah. Like if you, because, I mean, I'm not stupid. Okay, but eventually he told you what happened. No, he didn't tell me that he killed anybody. Or that he was going. But you know that he was going over there. I knew that he was going over there. Yeah. What day? He told me, he's like, he's like, don't worry about what I'm doing. I'll take care of it. We're talking about them, though. I'm guessing so, because that's just what he keeps uh, saying. He, your importance is in the details, not in vagueness. They told me I'm going to jail regardless. Well, I doubt that the the, uh, the fraud part may be, but that's, that's nothing. Okay. That is nothing compared to these charges. Yeah. For first to be murder. No. If I say all of these things, will I get in trouble? If you don't say any of these things, you're definitely going to get in trouble. But that, that's, this is where I'm scared. If I say these things, like, I, I didn't do any of this. Put it this way. If you protect him and you don't tell us everything, mm -hmm. then you're part of the crime. Amelia is now met with a harsh dilemma. She has to either gamble that the detectives never connect her to the crime and face felony charges herself, or fess up and snitch to the police, likely sending her husband to jail for the rest of his life. This is her last chance to make the right decision, or she'll never see her son again. Yeah, go on. Um, so I let her know she wanted to know. She went with her dad to the bank and she looked at the transaction history and she wanted to know what the checks were. Um, so. I can't tell her much. And then he's over my shoulder listening to my conversations with her. And he's just like, I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. He just wasn't having it. He didn't want me to talk to her. He didn't want me to contact her. And who are we talking about her? Um, the guy's you, daughter. You know her name? Cindy. Cindy. She's on the Cindy. Cindy. And he knew who Cindy was? Um, only because of the conversations that me and her were having. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know if it was Tuesday or Wednesday. He called out of work. Um, and he said that I'm going to take care of things. The next day he just, he comes home and he's like banging on the door. This is like... The, the, where the apartment, or the house where we we were at today? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> he came banging on the door. Um, when he came home, he took the gun apart. He was shaking. Um, he took all his clothes off. He put it in a garbage bag and then he went by his mom and dad's house. Okay. When did you become aware that he was involved in a murder? Well, I didn't know what, what happened. I just stopped hearing from her. And then when I said something about, can I call her? He told me no. And then he got really mad at me. He was like, if you say something, I'm gonna kill you. Okay, he's not gonna say that unless he told you about the murder. That's the part that, that so when, when did he tell you about the murder? It, so you, you gotta let this go, you can't. Anything you hold back is not gonna look good. You got to just tell him it hurts. It's scary. I understand that, but not talking is worse for you than talking. It was he you never describe how what he never physically said like what he did or if anything was done. Did he say he shot him? Well, I'm, I'm guessing he had a gun. So don't guess. Did he tell you that he shot him? Yes. He said he shot him. Mm -hmm. And with that, the detectives managed to use Amelia's tactics against her and got her to confess to her own husband's crime. The detectives also stuck to their word and, after confirming that she had nothing to do with the murders, dropped the charges against her. She was, however, still charged with theft and sentenced to three years in prison. Josh, however, was found guilty of the first-degree murders of Cindy and Sean Stack and was sentenced to life behind bars.